This guide will show you how to calibrate your Apple Studio display. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Apple have changed the way how color management is done on their display and this includes the new Studio display. Let's find out what is the best approach you can take to calibrate these display and get a successful result. Let's start by going into System Preferences. From there, there are two places I recommend visiting first before you click on display. One of them will be Desktop and Screensaver in the Screensaver tab. Uncheck Show Screensaver After so that it doesn't come up in the middle of your calibration. Go back to the main screen and click on Energy Saver. Slide the Turn Display Off After to Never. You can set this back to the default value that you want afterwards, but during calibration, you don't want your screen to go off in the middle of it. Go back to the main screen and now we can click on display. This will present you with information that you may have been used to before, for example, resolution, the brightness you will see it's grayed out, and the reason why is because I am in a preset photography reference mode. If you want to find out more about all these different reference modes, how they function and what to expect out of them, I'll leave a link to my video I create up here and also in the description below because it go over in a lot of detail how these whole thing works. For now, the best thing that you can do is to create a custom preset for your photographic workflow needs before you go in and do anything else. The way how you calibrate these displays is going to change from what you have done before and also other Apple displays that you may have used in the past. So click on Customize Preset. The best thing that you can do is choose the preset that Apple has already created as a starting point. For instance, I will choose Photography P3D65 as a starting point. Do that by highlighting it and click on the plus symbol. At that point, it will use that preset as a starting point and now I can customize it. The first thing that I would do is highly recommend you change the name according to the preset that you have set or will set. For instance, I want this to be Luminance 100. I will type in L100. If I'm going to change the color space, instead of using P3, I want to use sRGB. I would change it right there. And if I'm going to change, for example, the white point, I would certainly change it in the preset name as well. This way, you know the setting that you have selected so that when you go in and choose a preset, you know exactly what are those changes that are going to happen to the display. Once you're done with that, you will simply go in and choose the gamut. For example, if I want P3, I would just choose that, but you can certainly choose Rec. 709 and sRGB as well. White point, D65, you can certainly choose D50 if you're calibrating your display for printing, if you want to do that. And SDR transfer function, which is pretty much just gamma in layman terms. So pure power, 2.2, this is pretty much gamma 2.2. But if you do video, I highly recommend going in and choose BT1886 as a gamma curve because that is a logarithmic curve that works better for video work. All right, from that point, the only last setting you have to dial in is the luminance value. So the luminance value for SDR right now is set to 160, which is too bright. I am going to set this to 100. Once you're done with this, make sure that limit luminance to full screen capability is checked. The only one that you can't uncheck this is on the Apple Pro Display XDR. This is based on Apple recommendation. Click on save preset, your screen will go dark for a little bit in order to adapt this preset mode, and then you can go in and start the calibration process. Because I have a preset like this already created, I am going to cancel out because I am on that preset right now, as you can see on the screen. But rather than having my luminance at 100, I have my luminance set to 80. Now the next thing that I recommend that you do before you go in and calibrate the display is to do a white point fine tune or fine tune calibration. To do this, you would come and click down on fine tune calibration and you're presenting with a dialogue that looks like this. It could be daunting at first, but it is very simple. So I'll pull this to the side and I will launch Color Checker Profiler. This is a software from Calibrite. However, if you want to use i1 Profiler, they are pretty much the equivalent software. The device that I'll be using to do this white point fine tuning or fine tune calibration is the Calibrite Color Checker Display Pro. If you have a Color Checker Display Plus, i1 Display Pro or i1 Display Pro Plus, all those devices will work with this software as well, including X-Rite Color Spectrophotometer. For instance, if you have the i1 Pro series, you can certainly do this, but you have to use the i1 profiler to do that. I know, a lot of information just now. 
And now with Color Checker Profile Launch, I am going to choose to work in advanced mode and click on profiling. So the best backlight that you can use for this particular display is GBLED. Even though the default for this program is going to show you WLED, you want to choose GBLED. And based on my testing, this provides the best tonal curve for like color tracking between the red, green, and blue. From that point, I'm going to do this. Move the screen to the side a little bit and also resize some of the elements in there so it's easier to do what we're about to do next. In white point, we're not going to use D65, but what we're going to do is click on that drop down list and go down to the very bottom to measure. A secondary drop down list will show up, and right now it's set to ambient light. We're not interested in that at all. What we're going to do is choose the second option, which is secondary display. From that point on, what you would do is click on white patch, and I highly recommend pulling this out to the side because if the app, for instance, go over to white patch, it's really hard to find it again. So it's just better if you move it preemptively to the side. What is wanting me to do now is to take this device, rotate the cover. And what I would simply do is put this on that white patch. From here, I will click on measure. This is going to give me a value for the display and it's going to tell me, for example, the luminance of the display and also the white point coordinates. What I would simply do is transpose these numbers into the white point fine tune dialog. So I'll bring this a little bit closer to me. So right now the measure value for white point is 0 0.316 and the Y is 0 0.329. The luminance right now is 76.9. So I'll put down 77. And this is where we need to know the target value. The target white point for sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Display P3 for the X coordinate is going to be as follow. 0 0.3127 for the X value. Y value is going to be 0 0.329. And this is where you would set the target luminance that you want. For instance, I want this display to be at 80. I would type in 80. Note though that sometimes between the measured luminance value and the value you enter in, it's going to be too great of a range so that the display can adjust and it will show you an exclamation point. For example, let's say if I type in 85 here, you will see that it's showing me that orange exclamation point saying that this is out of range, this is more than I can adjust. So if that ever happens to you, I would highly recommend picking another number that is closer within range because these few like one or two nits changes, you're really not going to see it that much. So what I'm going to do now is type in 80, but if you hover over this right now, like what I'm about to show you, let's go back to 85 one more time. And what you can do is hover over it to which it will tell you, for example, the range is 70.2 to 82.3. So it does give a range where it can adjust if it's out of range. So that's something to consider as well. But you want to just use the value that I give you for the X and the Y coordinate for white point. What I'm going to do now is just set this to 80 and that should work just fine. You can type in the description, the changes you have done or the value that was measuring at, but I'm not going to do that for now. I'm simply going to click on OK. This is going to flicker the display dark because it has to adjust all those white points on the display. The moment the display turns up again, it's going to show you that the white point has been fine tuned. So now you will see this display preferences dialog. If I click on the very bottom here and then click on fine tune calibration, you will see that Current fine tuning, it says it gives you a date and also the time that you fine tune the display. I'll simply cancel this out, but if you want to restore this to the default from factory at any given time, you can certainly do that. Another thing that I also want to share with you as well is that before you do fine tuning calibration, leave your display running for at least around 15 minutes so that the backlight has a chance to warm up fully before you try to measure all these values. From that point on, you can simply close out the display system preferences dialog and what you're going to do next in CC Profiler is click on Cancel because you want to cancel that out. The white point will default back to D65, but what we're going to do instead, because we have already gone in and fine-tuned the white point, we're going to simply choose Native. This will calibrate the display based on the white point value that we already have entered. The luminance, you can certainly choose 80 and have the display adjust, but the best thing that you can do right now because you already defined the luminance and fine tune it is to choose native. This way, however bright the display is, it will calibrate it at that value. Tonal response curve, I would just leave this one at standard, for example, 2.2, just like that, contrast ratio native, and I'm going to click on next. 
All the default values in here are fine, so I'll leave that as such. For now, I'm going to do the sample calibration with 118 patches, but if you're doing this on your own, I highly recommend choosing medium or large. This way it is sampling a larger amount of patch. Now I'm going to click on measurement and start the measure process. It's going to ask me to tilt the display back and hang this on the display, to which I will say OK. And now I will click on Next. Normally the program would ask you to adjust the brightness level of the display, but because we're using everything native, it's just going to start the calibration process right away. This is going to measure 118 patches. I'll come back when this is finished. A few more anecdotes about display calibration I want to share with you is that you can calibrate the display in a bright environment like I am in right now. That's perfectly fine. And there is no color profile that you need to set before you start the calibration process because the program will automatically go in and apply a linear profile. It's asking me to cover the colorimeter up. I'll click on next and it says that the profile has been successfully created. So we'll go into next. And what I'm going to do is I'll save this at L80 GB LED. So I know what type of backlight I have selected when I'm calibrating this profile. At this point, you can click on Save Profile to which it will automatically apply. So you may wonder if you go into, for example, System Preferences, and let's pull this to the side, Display. It doesn't really show anywhere in there the ICC color profile you're using. How would you be able to access that? Well, to do that, you have to go into Color Sync Utility. And what you would simply do is click on the tab in the middle under Devices, Display. If it's closed, simply open it up and click on Studio Display. You will see the default profile from the factory and you will see that the profile I've just created is being applied to the system right now. You can certainly choose to reset this if you want to, for example, set to factory or choose another profile and you can do it there. After testing this, restarting system and everything, the profile does stay persistent in here and this is the only place on the system where you can apply the ICC profile to the display. From here, you can check some of the results. For instance, you can find how much contrast you're getting, the luminance that it was able to measure it, for example, the white point, which should line really closely with the number that we entered in. Another thing that you may want to check out as well is to do the curve tracking, and you can see that it's tracking really close on all the colors, and that is what you want. At this point, I'll click on Display QA. Let's run a validation. I'll use the x right Color Checker Classic. Click on Next and Start Measurement. I'll hang my device on the display again. Acknowledge that I have everything flat and simply click on Next. It is measuring 24 patches, so this should go much faster. Now that it's done with the validation, take the device down from the display, put the cover back on it, and let's see what kind of result we're getting. So click on Next. And we will see right now that even with the average threshold set to 2 and the maximum set to 5, the display is passing fairly well at the delta E under 2, even for the max one. You can certainly choose to save this out if you want to, save it for later. For instance, I'll save this right now as GB LED and I'll do at luminance 80. I'll save that. You can certainly add this to trending, to which it will tell you that it has, and if you click on next, it will show you the delta E that you're trending over time when you're doing the display calibration. From that point, you would simply close the program because you're done with the calibration and now your Apple Studio display is all calibrated, ready for what you need to do with it. Anyway, I hope you find this guide helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell you're new. And remember, in our trust.